Hey everyone, Strass Daddy here, and I am going to talk about a tool that I created that'll help you use probability and statistics to determine whether your deck building choices are sound or not, and will also help you with mulligan choices. So let's take a look at a deck that I built. And we are going to discuss a tool that exists on the internet called a hypergeometric calculator and how we would have evaluated probability before I had the tool. And then we will discuss what the tool that I created using Excel will enable you to make more precise, educated choices on deck design, mold choices, sideboard plans, etc. So we're using this deck here as a sample. And what I am going to do is I am going to say, this is a proactive deck and I want to get ahead. And every turn, what I want to do is cast a green spell. So if you were to look at this, I have 10 proactive green spells that I would want to cast. And I would go to my hypergeometric calculator here. And I would put in a 60 card deck, a seven card hand, successes in population 10. And I would click calculate and I would get the 74.1 number. And I'd go, hey, neat. Uh, this deck gives me a 74.1% um, chance that on turn one, I'll get to do something proactive. That's a little bit low. Uh, perhaps maybe I should bump the number up and, you know, I see about a 3% increase and then maybe I click it again and I go, eh, maybe I should up it to 12 and I can make some deck building choices based on that. Um, and then I would go, okay, well, let's look at my mana and we are going to go, what are the chances that I actually have a turn one? Greenland, so I would put all of my potential turn one green lands over in this column. And this deck has 15 possible turn one green plays. We're not going to use Cradle on turn one. It's not realistic. This card has summoning sickness. Talon Gate requires another source to make a green mana. So we're looking at turn one. What are the odds that I do a proactive thing, 15 here, 10 here, and we put it back into our hypergeometric calculator, and I could say, hey, there's about an 88% chance that I have a, uh, a land in hand to do so. But that doesn't tell you what the probability of having both a turn one green play in your hand, at least one, and at least one land in hand it tells you the chances of having either or, but you can't take the sum of this 88 and add it to your 74, whatever that number was, because that would be greater than 100, and it just wouldn't make any sense. Enter my calculator. So the first thing you do is you list your deck size, ladies, sorry, uh, then your hand size, which is seven, and if you're on the draw, you could put eight, or if you want to ask other questions, what are the chances that I'll have it when I have 8, 9, 10 cards in hand? But we'll get into that later. We're going to assume a 60-card deck and a 7-card hand. And the number of lands that I had was 15. And the number of turn 1 spells that I had was 10. And even though it said 74... And even though it said 88, there's about a 65% chance, 65 and a half, that I'll actually get to be proactive on turn one with a green spell with that current configuration. Okay, well, that seems a little bit low. Yeah, there's swords to plowshares and stuff like that, but, you know, swordsing on turn one is often not what you want to do. Um, and, and maybe grabbing a surveil land doesn't, you know, it's not the end of the world, but that's not really a great plan. So I think upon looking at that, I would probably make some deck building choices and I would 
opt to add more proactive turn one green plays. Let's evaluate one more situation with this deck. So in my sideboard, I have four Thoughtsies. And now I want to know, shoot, I'm going against turn zero combo. I hate turn zero combo. What are the chances that game two, I am actually going to get to use, that I'm going to have a Thoughtseize, and then I'm actually going to get to cast it. So in this current configuration, we can't bog, cast it. You can't cast it off a of Talon Gate. Same situation here. It's your Bayous, your Peat Lands, and your Fetch Lands, and your Scrub Land. So we're looking at 12 and 4, okay? Because I'm going to still play a 60-card deck. And I just want to know, I'm going against the uh, mean old combo deck. I'm playing 4 Thought Seas, and I'm playing 12 Black Lands. What are the chances that this is actually going to work? So I would put in 12 Black Lands. Or thought sees and look, you got about a 32% chance that you're actually going to get a, a, the land that you need and the thought sees that you need. That's the math. So uh, at that point, I would probably think that uh, you're likely going to have to mull your to, in order to get that turn one play. Um, and I, I think, uh, the four thoughts, he's as good as they are. If the format is extremely fast, that's probably not going to be enough. You're going to need some other free interaction. Okay. So let's look at another deck. We're going to do three decks here. And these hopefully will give you some ideas on how you could use this tool. Uh, the next one I'm going to evaluate here is a Mardu deck that I have built. So this Mardu deck, very similar, um, as, oh, sorry, it is this Mardu deck that I want to discuss. It has eight turn one black spells that I want to cast, and it has 14 turn, uh, uh, 14 lands that are black that I could actually use on turn one. And this is just this current iteration, but tools like this may make you reconfigure. So 14 and 8. I'm asking the same question with a different deck. 14 black lands, 8 discard. What are the chances I am going to get to interact with the mean old combo deck? So 14 black lands. Eight, we're looking at about a 56.3% chance. And if I said, well, maybe I should add another black land. We're only going, see here, we're going to 56.3. We go up by one, we go to 56.68. You could see column G is calculating that delta. We're not really going up by much. But if I added another discard spell, I'm not saying I want to play a duress in that deck, but let's just say I did. We go up 4%. So adding a land would help my probability by 1.38%. Adding a, an another turn one interactive spell would increase my chances by about 4%, roughly, you know, three times more or something like that is how much more effective it would be to add another spell rather than another land in that unique situation. And then we'll take this scenario one step further. We'll go back to eight. I am on the draw. I am going to have eight cards in my hand. And now I want to know, well, my hand size is eight, or I'm going to have eight looks because you might mull. So we'll change the seven to an eight. And by going up one more look, what are the chances in my 14 and eight situation? Well, it goes to 63. So pretty significant. Um... So it was, it's at 63.39 with an extra draw. And it goes down to 56. So that extra look does increase the chances that you'll at least have one. Um, the thing is, the probability is much different when you're already looking at your hand. Uh, the chances of you 
adding if you already don't have a discard in your hand or you already don't have the land then that's a different calculation but if you just wanted to know raw on the draw what are my chances if i'm going to build a deck like this that's that's what they are okay uh two more situations now so we are looking at a blue deck so we are going to look at a miracle deck that my buddy built a while ago and it runs a number of blue cards and i think if i sort by color you'll see it runs 23 no 26 blue spells that's a lot of blue spells and it also runs four force of will so what are the odds that in a deck like this that you will have a force of will and a blue card in your hand well you can kind of ignore the number of lands here because you could just say this is number of blue spells just thinking about it and it says 26 but force of will is not going to count itself on a blue card so it's going to be 25 so we're going to have 25 in one column four in the other 25 and four and we're looking at about a 39.25% chance that you will have a blue card and a force of will, which is pretty darn close to just having the force of will in your hand to begin with. So I think that that is plenty. You can see the diminishing returns here. If I went from say 23 uh, blue cards to 24, you're really only going up like 0.2 prop, you know, percent, 0.17. You know, you can see it's it's pretty small. There's a certain critical point. There's some diminishing returns on playing blue cards, but that is a, something that you could calculate with this. You could also then say, looking at this deck here, uh, well, I run two force negations in the sideboard. What are the chances? So now it's going to be. Uh, you would have uh, 27 and, uh, and 1. Uh, 27 and 6 is what you would put into the calculator. So lots of different ways to slice it. I think this is a good tool for that. And the last scenario that I'm going to cover will segue into another video that I'm going to make. And this is going to look into... The elves deck the current elves deck um and this will show you why it's kind of incomplete at this point um and my buddy is going to do a video um on that and we're going to look at the elves deck here so let's take a look at a list that newton had a long time ago and we are looking at a deck sort by mana value that what it really wants to do on turn one is be proactive and cast a green spell so we're going to put these four green sun zenus over here um, we have 18 turn one proactive spells and we have i believe newton at this time was running 15 uh, green lands so we are going to put them all over here 15 and 18 we go to our handy dandy calculator we say we have 15 lands and we have 18 turn one spells bam and we are looking at about an 82.09 percent chance to have a turn one spell with a turn one land that's pretty darn good however this is incomplete and the odds are even better and why are those odds better well there is a card called once upon a time and this is a free spell that you'll be able to cast on turn one and it'll enable you to find a land or a possibly a turn one spell and boy, does that make the math funky and this calculator 
cannot do that for you. And that'll be a video coming uh, to you shortly. So thanks for your time. I'll try to find a good way to post this calculator. And if people have any questions about using it or better ideas, please reach out. Uh, hopefully this will be one of many tools that you may have in making deck building choices.